Hello, and thank you for stopping by the Massachusetts Beer Reviews channel of YouTube. As always, with the panelists on a Wednesday night, Massachusetts Beer Reviews and Company, there he is, uh, Gabriel Salia from the Phoenix, Arizona area. Gabriel Salia. Uh, we have John Anale from Noonan, Georgia. We have Michael Kormoroff from Brooklyn, New York. And now joining us is Louisiana Beer Review's own Jay Terriot. And today's topic of choice, because I'm still, no pun intended, on a high from going to uh, San Francisco and Northern California wine country a couple of weeks ago, we're reviewing beers either brewed or the brewery has expanded outside of the state of California. Hello, I have tonight Bigfoot 2018 Barley Wine Woo! Style. All right. Very and nice. I've never, I've never enjoyed a warm San Francisco night. But it's, I've, it's all right. Some, I've enjoyed some cold ones. What does Michael oh, Kormoroff have this evening? I have Stone Tangerine Express IPA. Nice. <sighs> Tyler, Ty, our buddy Tyler Mansell will be proud. You brought a stone style IPA. He likes stone. And John Anile from Newman, Noonan, whichever one it is, Georgia. Which beer have you brought this evening? I've got the Sierra Nevada edition. Excellent. And so Gabriel Salaya, what have you brought this evening for California beers? Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Oh. Excellent. There All right. 5.6%. Excellent. That is a great beer. So I've never had, I believe it's fairly new. Maybe Jay can tell me otherwise. This is 2018 one hitter series for the, you can't even see it, for the Waldos. Never had it. No, it's not new, but they only put it out on April 20th every year. There you go. Hey, by the way, I think it's an awesome beer, and I love it. It's great, fantastic, wonderful, terrific, and fabulous. I noticed there was a lot of sediment in the bottle, so I'm going to swirl it. And what is my beer? He's got Tangerine Express from Stone Brewing Company. Oh, that's I, that's right. I never had that beer. I didn't fully pour it, but this is what the pour looks like. Eric, this reminds you of several others of your hazy, juicy beers. Oh, you mean like a trillium I'm going to have after this? Oh. Do you like the color of this Tangerine Express? It definitely looks like, uh, I would say it's kind of lemony, yellowy, kind of hazy. Yeah. yeah, like a pale ale. And there, there's right, what, Jay, explain your barley wine from Bigfoot, Sierra Nevada. Well... I did a solo review of it before we went on air because I wanted to get a solo review. I'll see how it comes out. Oh. It's got, it had a super thick white head about to go over the top. It was very, very foamy and beige. And you can see that ruby red or copper red appearance. It has major yeast sediment at the bottom where I'm tapping my finger. It's a brilliant beer. It's brilliant in color and it's brilliant in conception. This is a fabulous beer. How untapped can the 74 out of 100? Who knows? Yeah. yeah, how untapped gives it a 74 out of 100 is mad madness in my booklet. And let's let's assess the appearance of Sierra Nevada's Summerfest Ale, John and Neely. Pour pretty nicely. You got a nice, thick, slightly off white head. It's a light golden color with. Um, Medium carbon, good. Can't wait to get into it. I've never had it. Oh, Gabriel, you're going to love it. Gabriel Solaya. Yes. Explain the color of Sierra Nevada's pale ale to us. It's like dark golden, almost like a amber color. What and when, what aromas are you getting from the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale at this time? The hoppy hops aroma. 
That is the primary hops aroma. and sweets. All right. Fruity and sweet. That's Happy delicious. fruity and sweet. That sounds like a and don't, we've all had that beer, but that still sounds delicious. Yeah, about, first time uh, having don't it. Don't forget the white bread and the bread crust. First, white my first bread. time having it. And it's your first time having it. Congratulations. Wow. It, it smells beer. like a wheat beer. Oh no. It's got some breadiness, as Jay is saying, definitely. Okay, let's go right back to John and Ilay. How does Sierra Nevada's Summerfest lager smell on the aroma? Very yeasty. Very, yeah, you get a little bit of yeast. It smells bready also. Uh, a little fruit note in there as well from the hops. This is actually, I believe, a Czech style. Yeah, Czech style lager. So a little hop presence on the nose. Really a nice, light smelling beer. This is, I mean, it is great to uh, drink and session in hot temperatures and it smells like it's gonna do just that all right how about michael komaroff and tangerine express well, ipa does first, it smell the, the of tangerines first nose you get is um very tropical pineapple and um kind of like peachy fruity and then if you smell a little bit deeper you get a little bit of a dankness in the background very nice aroma we're going to mute Gabriel for a moment. He's a little noisy in the background. No offense. I already mute myself. All right. Yeah, keep, just, keep, track of vol <laughs> keep track of volume is all. So now we go to an interesting ale. 2018 Sierra Nevada Bigfoot. How does that smell? What's the aromas on that? Okay. And I, before I talk about this, John and Ely, John and Ely's got that. His I like his beer because it's got that. The yeasty breadiness and it's got like a slight lemony note and it's got um it's so like light to medium and drinkable and and it's it smells really good i'm i'm excited I, this will be my first time drinking it i have not had one off camera so this is the first one out of the six pack right here yeah it's got that little bit of grassiness in it oh that beer is awesome for its simplicity and sierra nevada is a great one okay but back to mine I just love talking about Sierra Nevada beers. Okay, sorry. All right, I get excited. All right, sorry. All right. Anyway, um, this one here, um, it's kind of weird and hard to describe because I always say that it has like a duck sauce or sweet and sour sauce aroma, and I know that's not correct, right? Like right. that's not accurate. But I don't know how to usually describe beers very well. So um, it's sort of pungent. It's really sweet. It has that depth of hop resin and it's got like a deep hop resiny quality it's just like a beer that the aroma aspect of it is fabulous and i should have bought the one that michael Kumaroff has but i keep passing it over because of my opposition to, to flavored you know beers but maybe i should give it a chance but anyway that's it it smells great all right, excellent. I have well, I watched Jay's review of this Waldo's beer. Besides that, I actually haven't really done any research or in, or looked up a whole bunch about the beer. So I'm going in as blind as blind can be, except for people saying it's recommendable. So, all right. So yeah, color is definitely that darker orangey kind of an amber color. There is yeah it's a good looking camera yeah you definitely can see some of the some of the sediment floating around there there was a bigger head i think in more of a narrower rim glass maybe you get more of a head there um yeah the aroma is actually it's not as huge of an aroma as you would think for 11.3 it smells almost like gabriel's um sierra nevada pale ale to be completely honest but but maybe with a little bit more of an oily resinous quality to it. So if you could make Sierra Nevada Pale Ale more oily and more resinous without it having a higher alcohol kind of a sweet smell to it, that's what I'm getting. I'm also getting Michael Komaroff's tropical notes from his beer, um, white brightness. And I am not getting any crisp or cleanness to it, but we'll find out in the taste when we uh, 
get to that. So I think without further ado, let us taste our California beers. Cheers, Cheers everybody. And uh, Happy have, no doubt, have no doubt, the Waldos will have a huge effect. It may not have a huge nose, but you're going to feel it. Did you watch the video we did with the guy, with my partner with the Ooh. big beard? Did you watch that? I don't recall that video, to be completely honest. Yeah, my we, apologies. That's okay. We recorded it about a week, uh, uh, about uh, a month ago. Mm. Uh, we love it. That's a really excellent beer. It definitely follows through in the nose almost 100%. It has that white bready malt. There's a little bit of a toasty note, which is a little different. Um, which I should expect in that kind of a color there. And again, tropical, I'm getting a lot of orangey notes, some grapefruit, some pineapple, uh, orange is maybe the second kind of a note I get in that one. Definitely that pine resin and sappiness and uh, oiliness. It's such a, actually compared to the nose when I said it didn't smell like it was going to be very crisp, it does have a nice crispness and it kind of is on the clean side if that makes sense there is there is a i would say a moderate or how would how would you say that jay it's like a three and a half maybe uh out of five sugar cubes for how sweet it is i guess oh yeah. Eric, is that malt sweetness probably. i think so probably there's a, there's a big five. there's a big sharp bitterness initially but because of how it cleans it doesn't last all that long and then afterwards a couple seconds afterwards there's a little bit of 11.3 you don't feel you don't feel and taste a whole bunch of it when you put it on your palate and then when you uh, swallow the beer but just a couple seconds later is when you can kind of tell it's a little bit of a bigger beer so so far so good i think uh new england ipa fans could like this beer oh yeah that beer is just I'm happy. We drank, we drank that, and we did the video. And then my friend, he was like, "Let me try this. Let me try that. Let me try this." I was like, "I don't know if you ought to do all that." So then, later on, I had this nail in my tire, and I said, "Can I take your uh, tire pump home because it's going to be flat before I go to Walmart the next day?" And he said, "Yeah, you don't want to take my tire pump." Yeah. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, "No, I really do want to take it because um, the tire is going to be flat." So he was like. I was like, I was thinking to myself, I'm glad you're not driving anywhere because it's just that powerful. You know, it'll, oh, yeah. it'll, it'll just knock your socks yeah. off. I'm, I, I, I don't want to jump out of line, but I'm really curious. I'm seeing Gabriel over there in Phoenix, Arizona, taking some sips of that Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. What can you tell us you're getting out of this beer for the first time ever drinking this beer? Sweet and, and fruity. Fruity and sweet. Any uh, any uh, bitter aspects to the beer? No, not it's, it's really fruity. Ooh. Wow, not not too bitter for Gabriel. I like that. All right, six point two. No, right. five point two. How would you describe the mouthfeel? Is it an e is it heavy, light, medium? How does it drink? Medium. Easy to drink. Easy going. Yes. All right. You it like kind of, it? it? It's kind of filtered. You like it so far? Yeah, it's good. Excellent. So fruity. And yeah, it's you. It's like a classic and, ale, man. It's, that thing is a legend for thirty-eight years. Hell yeah. So all right, you'll you'll continue to keep sipping on that one. Excellent, Jay Terrio, twenty eighteen, uh, Bigfoot Barley Wine. How is that faring this evening? Well. First, let me say, it really doesn't taste any different than all the other years I had it. You know, I've been drinking it for, t well, I don't know, about 10 years, and uh, it always tastes the same. Their quality control is incredible at Sierra Nevada. And um, I did age some for five years, 2013 to 2018, and it tasted great. It didn't lose anything. It was still super bitter. You say, oh, no, after five years, the hops would fade. Sorry, no, they did not. It was still tasted like, still tasting like a 90 IBU beer. And so I have a 2014 on, on reserve in the refrigerator to drink in 2019. But this beer, uh, I mean, for $1.99 a bottle, get real. This is like a great value. It's like one of the great values in the beer world. Um, we got Bart Robinson says, hey, fellas, I've always enjoyed 
Firestone Walkers, Easy Jack IPA, and the Anchor Steam Brews also. I love those, but I've never had the Firestone Walker Easy Jack. Well, this beer here, okay, let me describe it real fast. It is super bitter. So if you hate bitterness, you're going to hate this beer. It is on your tongue, and it is so bitter. It's 90 IBUs, and it tastes like it. Mm -hmm. it it's funny because a lot of IP, so-called IPAs that are on the market today, I mean, it's a joke. They're 15 IBUs. Come on, man, 15 IBUs, that's not IPA. That's, I don't know what that is. <laughs> this, this is more of an IPA than most IPAs. Well, I don't know about most, but many. And um, it's got a lot of maltiness, a lot of bread crust, uh, like sweet, uh, 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 a brown bread crust, um, a lot of bread qualities, and it is just super resinous, hoppy, oily, bitter. It's intense, and I love it. It's like, it's like intensity in 10 cities. It is great. It's like camping in tents. <laughs> Jay, does the resinousness go into dankness stage or not? It does sort of convert into that, but not so much as you would encounter with a torpedo, extra IPA, you know, that is super danky uh, and, and, and oily. But this is certainly, Michael, uh, strong hop oils and just straight on full board bitterness now i know michael likes that kind of stuff so i do wouldn't, wouldn't I all right i gotta explain this really fast because i'm already seeing a i'm already seeing a little bit of a change in the body and the mouthfeel the waldos here it's getting a little bit more it's still cool it's still cold but it's getting a little bit closer to room temperature yeah and at this point i'm getting more of the syrupy sweet mouthfeel and, and notes to it at this point which i am enjoying this immensely and for our buddy tyler mansell go check out his youtube channel i'm sure you all know that one from wisconsin beer, beer reviews he talked about in his area and it's probably in, in all of our areas too a 9.99 six pack that is a dangerous but that's a that is a steal so far so i Eric, yeah i don't think that beer does so well as it warms i think the wall does does better super cold i agree say, oh no you're crazy because ales are supposed to warm i don't know i think it's got too much alcohol and when it gets start gets close to room temperature it starts getting cloying and a little yeah. gross so it the, the cold 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 does not hurt it because it's got such a high ib uh, uh, uh abv I'm I'm starting to understand what you mean by that. Yes, but um, let's go to a bit of a lower ABV uh, bitterness level beer in the Stone Tangerine Express with Michael Cormoroff. Okay, case. well I should give you the details on the beer itself. It's six point seven percent, seventy five IBU, so it's fifteen less than Jay's. They use Citra, Centennial, Sterling, Azaka, and Mosaic hops. In the, in the beer and stone does all, all often use a lot of different hops in their beer yes so the taste follows the nose with the tropical and tangerine and the only difference is and we've had this kind of taste before that kind of oniony kind of feel to it it has that too and it's interesting because that crossing with the tropical makes it very inviting and it's medium mouth feel and it goes down really easy It's an excellent beer. What about the fruit flavor? Okay, the fruit flavor is more citrus kind of fruit. In other words, orange, tangerine, um, but it's throughout. In other words, you get it, it flows through the beer. Doesn't stand out. It's there. It's yeah. good. I like it. Excellent. Let's but it's go. not ice. No, it's, it, it's almost like... They call it Tangerine Express, and Tangerine is your primary taste, but orange is there as well. Tangerines and oranges are kind of similar. Yeah, I think a tangerine is almost like a type of orange or something. I don't know. But it right. tastes more tangerine-y than it does orange. Cool. I got, you. I got right you. On. So you keep sipping that beer, and we will go straight to our uh, – Done. Resident expert. I was going to say our resident lager expert, but we all kind of like ales and lagers too. But John Anile with the Summerfest Crisp Lager from Sierra Nevada. On to the taste. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I've been enjoying it. Um, it's super light. Uh, you get some bready notes in there. It's got some grassy notes as well. Um, it's nice got bird that in the background. It's got that lemony note in there as well as Ron uh, alluded to earlier. Um, a little bit of bitterness on the back end, but I'm really surprised by this because Sierra Nevada beers, from my personal experience, are usually very hop forward, but this one is very well balanced. I'm very happy with this beer because, as you all know, I love uh, American adjunct lager style beers, and this one is really like a craft version of of that type of beer. I mean, it's very, very enjoyable. Um, I don't know what the IBUs are. It is 5% alcohol. The IBUs are not listed on the bottle, but if I had to guess, I would say somewhere between, I don't know, maybe 20 and 25. I mean, very, very good, dry finish, sessionable. Um, those those grassy notes and that, that little lemony um, – twang on the on the in, in the mouthfeel are really enjoyable i'm this is an excellent beer for sure and it only costs 849 for a six pack which for sierra nevada in my area is pretty cheap yeah sounds like a winner definitely gabriel are any of the later tastes you're getting changing no okay well, fruit, fruity it is. Fruity it is. How much did a can of Sierra Nevada Pale Ale cost you? A dollar ninety-nine. That's a good. Sixteen-ounce can. That's a good price for that beer right there. Hey, Eric. You know what? Was that? I almost bought the Lagunitas um, um, Twelve of Never, but I wasn't sure if my can was from California or from a. Uh, What's that town in North Carolina where they brew it now? Is it Mills River? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, I, I, I said, uh, I want to be sure it's brewed in California. So I bought the Sierra Nevada Bigfoot, which I'm pretty sure is from Chico, California, right? Yeah, it says right here in the county. Oh, wait, Mills River, North Carolina. Uh oh. It says here in Chico, Chico, California. I know. That's all. You know, mine, That's okay. Mine says, mine says both. It says, it doesn't specify. It says, Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, Chico, California, and Mills River, North Carolina. So who knows? I guess you and, have to know how to read. And Mills River, so. North Carolina. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Lagunita uh, said. The Lagunita said Petaluma, California, and Chicago, Illinois. I'll allow it because it's a California-based brewery. So yeah, they're all good in my book. And the stone is from Escondida, California, or Richmond, Virginia. That's the that's the new one, right? That's the Virginia. new brewery they just opened, I think, last year. So we're all possibly drinking beers, except for Gabrielle, I bet, that are actually not brewed in California. Ah! But, no? but, the, but the key to the taste was you, California based beers, where they all are. Right. This one says Chico, California. You are so close compared to the rest of us. Gabriel, the reason we think yours came from Chico for sure is they're not going to ship it cross country back to you. So guaranteed, yeah. yours came from Chico. It says it's Mills River, North Carolina. I know it says it, but it didn't come from Mills River. Yours came from Chico. They Speaking don't of your beer, you're in Phoenix. There's no way they're going to yeah. ship it from Ch North Carolina to Phoenix. Sorry. Speaking of your beer, the uh, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. If you had to do a Gabriel rating of that beer, how would you rate that? I rated a six out of ten. Yes. What so would you? Thrilled with it. What would you change about that beer if you had some, if you could change anything about it? Maybe less fruity, <laughs> less sweet. Okay. Make it like a gold lager oh. taste. So Gabriel, oh. are you, are you oh. trying to defeat the pale ale taste that they're trying to do? <laughs> I guess. That's all right. No, Maybe uh, Sierra Nevada Summerfest is the beer. Actually, for you. send them a letter and tell them to come up with a new and improved version. And, <laughs> and so, we I mean, that you asked the question, you got the answer. And yeah. uh, I'm going to move, I'm gonna move on. We're going to move on I'm to the new and improved version of Sierra Nevada. That's going to do a Sierra Nevada Golden Lager. So, we're going to go to the Sierra Nevada Golden Lager next with 
with a John and Neil, he's drinking Sierra Nevada lager, Summerfest lager. Right. How would you Summerfest. rate that beer? So, so yeah, Gabriel, I think you would like the Summerfest a lot more. It, it sounds like it's probably more along the lines of the style of beer that you like to drink. But uh, this for me is, it's an A border, bordering on A plus. It's a nine, it's a ninety eight out of a hundred. It's one of the better um Ooh. lagers that i've had in a while i just drank a pbr earlier and i gave that one a 97 this is a little bit better and it's, it's so i'm gonna give it a 98. it's not better for the price though no no but i'm rating on enjoyability yep. and just the quality alone so there 98 out of 100. there you go if the, you had to change anything besides price which doesn't have anything to do with the beer itself. If you had to change anything uh, that would stop you from giving it two extra points to a mere 100, what would you do to change that beer? Or are That's we nitpicking question. at this point? It, it's it's pretty much, I mean, it's almost perfect for me. Um, I, I like the lemony qualities and, and the grass notes there in the middle. I would like maybe a little bit more breadiness to give it that perfect 100 out of 100. To, because I like the uh, you know toasty or the, the, the notes that you get with a lot of um, you know your American adjunct lagers, and there although there is a little bit in here, I would like it to be a little bit more pronounced, maybe in the middle of the sip uh, to give it that perfect score. But I mean, we're just nitpicking here. This is a 98 out of 100. It's an A plus, bordering on world class beer, and uh, I have really no complaints about it. It's e excellent, excellent beer, and I've finished. Oh, 12 ounces of it, so it's got to be good, right? Yep. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can do that. We're in luck. Okay, let us go to Brooklyn, New York, and get I'm stoned with Tangerine Express. I'm going to give, uh, I'm gonna give mine a 93, Ooh, okay. which, is, which, which is an A for me. What keeps it from being world class, I guess, is it's not six point brewery. It maybe has a minor carbonation issue in that the carbonation could be sharper. That's the only complaint that I really have with Is it, it too with smooth beer. on the carbonation? It's a little bit. It's, it, have you ever had beers that were kind of dull, carb, dully carbonated? There's carbonation yes. here, but it's just not. It could be more effective in what it's bringing across. What, what do you know what the can says for a date? Yes. On that. The can says that could have something to do with carbonation. Okay, the can says February fourteenth, which does make it three months old. It claims you can drink it until, if we believe Stone, until the twelfth of never. Um, they have a four month shelf, so they say it's good until June fourteenth. That sounds about it's right. A, it's so. a January twenty, January twenty second, two thousand eighteen. But I, what I'm saying is the hops don't seem faded in three months. The hops seem very, you know, good. Right and just, lively. I would like the carbonation to be a little bit better. But again, 93 for me is a high rating. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I will say with the Sierra Nevada beers, I like how they put the package date on there because, you know, sometimes the best buy dates you don't really know unless you look it up, like what their range is. But it says on the back of mine, packaged on March 26, 2018. So we're looking at less than two months old for this beer. So very, very fresh. And um, that gets, you know, uh, bonus points for me for the packaged on date. I really like when they do that. My new camera is good. It is not that. You can almost see it. It's good. It's not that good. Um I got the dreaded lot code. Who the F knows what that, part of my French, who the hell knows what that means? 0858 with a dash, with a space, 2, 2705 with a space, 1139. I have no clue. That's because so you heard, William that's Kepley, he's our age yeah, reader. I guess. William Kepley would tell you what that code means. What I do know is, is that they tell you, and I think that's a thing on all their beers, though, so there you go. Um, it does say on, an, on a 11.3% alcohol by volume beer, life is uncertain, don't sip. <laughs> wow, ouch. So uh, before I get to any kind of a rating there, I want to hear 
where we're going on ratings for 2018 Sierra Nevada Bigfoot American style. We didn't mention that American style Farley one. First, let me say that I love Gabe Gabe Gabe's idea. He's saying, uh, "Well, it ain't no King Cobra, but it's okay." <laughs> <laughs> Milwaukee's best ice. Right. It ain't no. It ain't no hurricane. Cobra. It ain't no hurricane Malika, but it'll do in a in a pinch. <laughs> um, in a pinch. But um, hey, but you know, um, Sierra Nevada Bigfoot. Well, I mean, heck. It's an A plus all the way. It's a 98 out of 100. It's awesome beer. If you don't like this beer, you probably just hate beer. Are you trying to make points in the beer snob community or something? I've actually talked to people that like to rag on beers. Like I asked this guy one time, I won't name his name on your show. I said, oh, I was drinking Guinness Foreign Extra Stout. And he said, oh yeah, I like to drink that beer when I'm slumming it. What, what what's wrong with that beer? I said, oh, okay. I got a beer snob in the house. But anyway, you know, because I don't mind battling, you know. But uh, this beer is awesome, you know, for a dollar ninety nine a bottle. No complaint. And what would I change about it? Nothing. It's like asking me what would I change about Soul beer from Mexico? Nothing. I would never change anything on that beer. Is that a perfect beer? Hardly. It's per it's not perfect. It's, it has flaws, I guess. Not that I've ever made any beer. But um, there's no way I would ever change Soul Beer. They've been making this since 1899. No, I would put a gun in my head before I change Soul Beer. Sorry, not going to do it. Can everybody see my Guinness Believer t-shirt? Mm. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. They, Diageo owns Guinness, and they used to do all these free get-togethers where you'd go, and they'd give you all three of their... Guinness Harp and Smithix, Smithwicks. Yes. I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah, Smithix. Those are the three things they brew. And it was great because not only was it free, but they make a major production out of it. It's a lot of fun. Mm. Wow. Hey, uh, John and Neela, Anila, y'all were loving that soul beer last Saturday, huh? I really, really liked it. I, I liked it more than Tyler did. Um, he, he was going easy on it, I think. But yeah, I mean, it was a, I really like it. It had a lot of bready, biscuity type qualities to it that I don't remember picking up the first time I tried it. And uh, that's why I left you a comment. You were saying you thought it was a bit bland. I think you should revisit it soon because I thought it was like just excellent. It it, it was better than Corona, um, Modelo Especial. Like it was Whoa. probably, it probably, but well, wait. Well, wait. But wait, I like bland beers, so that's, that was not a put down. <laughs> well, no, I know it wasn't, but I, I thought it was so um, just well made. I don't know. Yeah, and, uh, I would revisit it in a minute. You know, I would revisit it. Oh, yeah. Um, and y'all had some really choice Mexican food in that video, by the way. Yeah, Cinco de Mayo, everybody. That was, on yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then I turned 30 years old on Sunday, and the Bruins oh, lost man. the playoffs. And Eric, so, happy birthday again. Thank you all. Happy I went birthday. to a couple of places in Rhode Island. Uh, one of them, well, one of them was a craft beer bar. It used to be named Doherty's East Ave Cafe. It was on East Ave in Pawtucket. They've since gone out of business. Now it's uh, called Craft B and B, craft beers and burgers. Uh, we shared a little mix a six trial thingy. Uh, what do they call that? A sampler in my my big uh, pint was uh, Exalted IPA from Stone. I thought that was pretty good. And then I tasted one of the, I tasted all these samplers, and one of the samplers I was kind of curious about was Founders Brew. I was the Founders Solid Gold. And then the next place we went to oh. to watch the end of the uh, the Bruins game, I got a pint of the uh, Brewers Gold, and I like that beer. That's pretty good, and it, it's kind of comparable to that pub beer from 10 barrel brewing company in, in in basic flavor and principle and how it comes in a 15 pack and it's lagers but i think that there's much more bready multi a little bit more hop notes to the founders and the pub beer but to get back to this california beer the waldos i am i was crazy about it initially I am very much enjoying it now. I'm not as crazy about it as I was initially. Um, 
definitely, it's, I, I guess I would describe the beer at this point in time with the mouthfeel as being a borderline between pretty easy drinking for what it is and yeah, I can understand why some people could find it a very hard, syrupy, sweet beer to drink. It's somewhere right in the middle there for me. Don't uh, put it warm. Put don't a number it. on it, Eric. A number and a grade. Um. So that's sort of the only complaint. If it were more smooth and maybe a more malty, I could give it higher ratings. Um. It seems like my standard 88 comes out all the time. I'm going to give it an 88. I think that's the only thing that could change about the beer. Is, is if it were a little bit more malty and maybe the alcohol is just toned down some so that the drinkability is a little bit easier. 88 is a B plus? That's yeah. a B plus in my book. You let it warm too much. Well, it's Jason, hard. you have to drink it well, cold yeah, and yeah, it well, you stay know, an A. Again, you know what Lagunita says, life is uncertain, don't sip. I guess I shouldn't be sipping 11.3 percent. Eric, did right? Dave accompany you on your birthday celebration? He did. Oh well, we we on Saturday we got together all day, and we went to we went to two breweries. We went to uh, the second brewery we went to was Trillium. Hmm. You can read. I've that. heard of that one. And then the first one we went to was ba ba bum. Treehouse Brewing Company. I've heard of that one too. Uh, yeah, that, that's all I ever hear about. Yeah, Treehouse for me is cool, but it's 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 an hour and eight minutes from where I live, it, it going into the central part of Massachusetts. It's, it, it's a giant facility. Dave and I guess probably two three million dollars maybe. It's so overly crowded. You there's either a buy cans line only, or get into another line and to get only cans and drafts and when you go there you have to buy tickets just to buy draft beer and you and they give you here are these beers in the green ticket here are these beers in the red ticket here are these beers in the blue ticket and each beer has a in each price each color price point has a different price for the beer so yeah. when we got when we got into line and we finally said you know what let's buy the beer later and let's go to the draft line now. We got to the very front, not knowing a damn thing on how this works. And, and and the lady at the bar goes, oh, where are your tickets? I'm like, nobody told us we needed tickets. It That's just my problem. It's it's way overhyped, and it's just way too crowded. But did you get to taste still pretty amazing the, beer. Eric, did you get to taste any of the green or the Julius or any of their other main beers that they have? You see, Dave and I would have bought beer, but we didn't want to go back and stand in like a 30-minute line, so we didn't buy beer, unfortunately. But we did taste, both of us tasted the Julius, which I think a lot of people, including Darwin's Beer Reviews that I did message on or comment on a review we did of Julius, he thinks that that's not overhyped beer, but I think it is. Dave and I, the only thing that we can say negative about Julius is I think Dave and I like a little bit bigger, bolder beers, and that's a little bit too on the safe side. It's just too smooth and easy going for us. I had the but green. I had the green, and I loved it. See, I was going to buy green in cans, but then again, I didn't want to go back in line for like 45 you. minutes to buy beer. You. What was the second brewery you went to? Trillium Brewing Company. And you had a good time in, there? In, in Canton, Massachusetts, in my neck of the woods. Much okay. smaller. It's still got a lot of people in there, but they manage people amazingly. And they're bigger, bolder IPAs, even though this one here is called Little Chicken. And Little Chicken is in their small bird series, smaller ABV pale ale. So they do a lot of different things. Both of those companies do really good uh, Imperial Stouts. Treehouse had one that Dave tried that was an Imperial Stout. It kind of had smoky notes, kind of had um, um, really fudgy, chocolatey coffee notes. And syrupy um maple syrup notes without being too sweet so that was a better beer for us than the julia so it was all right jean is taking jean is taking a break from beer for a while that's probably okay, a good idea i saw he not, said he but, not, but not permanently oh eric yes i'm gonna say a few things before i get off can i do that go right ahead it only take me about 35 40 minutes go um, right ahead <laughs> um I'll finish First the wall. Off, how do you like being 30? It feels like 29 so far. 
You don't look a day. I'm over, 29. You don't look a day over 29. Honestly, just found out oh. that Gabriel is 29. All right, let's do a dirty 30 review. No way, man, that's all not right. All right, all right. Hey, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, let me say this. First of all, here is the challenge and the dare. Oh, whoa, what? The challenge is I have a whiskey review coming up on June 6th. So the challenge is that I invite you to take a break from the beer reviews for one Wednesday, June 6th, and do Canadian Limited whiskey, which has been on the market since 1972. The dare is I dare you to put a beer video up at the same time I'm doing whiskey. But now, <laughs> but uh, but you know what I mean. But anyway, you can choose you can choose your option. But I'm just saying, that's coming up. Wednesday is a I good night. I'll see both of them. What? I'll see both of the videos live. Right, yeah, <laughs> you, gotta choose, you, gotta, you gotta choose whether you wanna do Canadian Limited, Canadian <laughs> whiskey, or if you wanna both. do whatever beer. But I'm hoping Eric will, 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 will give in to my constant like oh. <laughs> gabriel <laughs> says we gotta gabriel says we gotta do it together gabriel does not determine no, i'm gonna it. watch it oh. together both videos at the same time. <laughs> jay as a potential compromise if we do want to keep doing our wednesdays why can't we switch the day and do your thing on a different one well we could but i have a problem and the problem is that Wednesday night is a good night for me because I do not have to go to work the next day. Other nights are bad because I have to go to work, you see. But I mean, I'm not a dictator. I'm not saying, Eric, you. I demand you do not do beer that one day for an entire month. That one simple little day, <laughs> just one little day, and join us for whiskey. Not to mention that I haven't joined you for many numerous and endless beer reviews, but, but I have jumped out of a lot of them too because i'm having to do other things like going to baseball games but i, I i'm just throwing it out there you know and bingo and, and yes, bingo and bingo and one bud light but, but <laughs> that, june 6th huh june 6th i'm just throwing it out there all right I, the beer, I bet you we can fit it into the schedule the beer, if we can... even if, wait even if you do the beer i'll still watch the playback you know but um I would love for you to join us and see what you think about Canadian Limited. I think it's pretty widespread. It's not like a rare product. I don't but think I've I, ever heard of it or seen it, but maybe I'll have to look for it. John and Neil, can you get Canadian Limited in the next county? Uh, I think so, Michael. It's uh, it's such a big, you know, popular brand. I'm pretty sure I could get it. Um, so I'll be looking for it. I saw the invite uh, that Ron sent out. So I'll be looking for it in the next week or so. Uh, if I can't find it in the next county over, I have to drive to Atlanta twice a week. I could probably find it in a big city like Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, and you can well, call that 1-800 number at Sazerac, and they'll tell you exactly where you can get it. But I just, I'm just i just throwing that out there to um, for me and Eric to negotiate and battle it out. Um cool. I have some other exciting news. Tanya Mikowski, you know her. Yes. She mm -hmm. came to Louisiana last Saturday, and we spent the entire day driving around, drinking beer, buying beer, and going to uh, hiking trails. Nice. I saw your stuff, Jay, on the brewery when you were in, um, I'm trying to think of, what's the small, it's not a small brewery, it's a Abita. big Abita Abita Abita. beer. In Abita. It looked interesting. Yeah, we did like six videos in there, and Ooh. You'll notice they become more ragged as they go on because <laughs> <laughs> I guess we as are, you consume more alcohol. Yeah, we had not we had not eaten any food, so but but um, <laughs> that's but we had a lot of fun. And then even more exciting, uh, three days later, Tanya drove to Mobile and met up with Jean Pierre. Wow! Oh, yeah, and they went to a beer museum together. So. Did she show John how to she eat? went on to see her mother, so she made it a complete trip. Did her, she gra show her grandmother, her grandmother, her grandmother. Her grandmother. Did she show as a as a resident Apple uh, uh, employee that she is. Did she show John how to use the internet? <laughs> well, I don't know, but she works for a different company today. She does. Oh. Uh, yeah, she does computer development for a different company. But they, but that's how she got to come to Louisiana because the company said, well. We're going to send you to Louisiana 
and, she got, and we're going to pay for everything. And she got to stay two nights in downtown New Orleans at La, pa pa La Pavillon. I was calling it Le Pavilion, but La Pavillon Hotel. And um, then oh, she good. stayed two nights at a friend's house. And I, that's where I picked her up when she was uptown New Orleans, close to the Mississippi River. And we drove all over. And I only got lost once. And um, it was a great time. You know, it's, it's so fun when you meet up with beer reviewers. Who knows? I could drive to Georgia one day and go meet up with beer reviewers and, and whatnot in uh, the Atlanta. Phoenix, Arizona. Or Phoenix. <laughs> I drove I think to Phoenix. Jay is pointing his car toward Phoenix tomorrow. I drove to Phoenix, Arizona 12 years ago, and I went to see the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks, I might add. But Gabriel uh, was only 17 at the time and couldn't drink beer, so he was different. Drink beer <laughs> legally. But um, but anyway, I had an exciting week in beer, and uh, we got the whiskey coming up, and I think there was something else. Oh, one more thing. Yes. An English beer company contacted me two days ago. Sweet. Out of the blue. I did not ask for this. There are free trip to London. There, well, <laughs> it's not that exciting. There are people... <laughs> There are people on the internet that claim that I go around begging for beer, but I can prove that's not the case. But anyway, I don't care about those people. But um, this company contacted me out the blue. I have the emails. And they said, look, we're Fuller's Brewing Company from England. We're wow. Family. Yeah, we're family owned. And we want to ask you if we send you Fuller's London Pride, Fuller's ESB, and Fuller's Vintage Air, would you make videos? I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, lucky, lucky, lucky. Those are all great beers, too. Send I know, right? beer and he will make videos. <laughs> Free advertisement. But see, these companies are smart because they'll watch my videos and they see that I gave everything an A. <laughs> then they'll send me beer to do more videos. They don't, you don't have companies looking at my videos and I'm making, giving them a D and an F and they're contacting me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, when uh, Modell, yeah, Min Minhouse will never contact you or uh, no, City Brewing. City Brewing will never. But like Minhouse, I mean, like a uh, Modelo. Modelo contacted me four years ago and said, "Hey, if we send you a fifty dollars worth of uh, Negro Modelo, will you make videos?" I said, "Well, I can't guarantee I'm going to say it's awesome." They said, "Yeah, but you already did a video and you said it was an A minus." I said, "Oh yeah." So <laughs> they sent me all kind of beer and they sent me all kind of spices and cutting boards and i gotta i gotta say not to not to cut you off there but i gotta say this this new logitech uh c920 camera is amazing look at the clarity well it's not really a clear beer but you can clearly tell it's not a clear beer oh yeah i mean the camera looks great this is this is a real good way to tell if you want to see a an unfiltered beer you can totally tell that this is a unfiltered beer so your, uh, hey, streaming, your streaming quality is great yeah thank you to that camera so yeah i got the gaming computer coming coming monday uh, i'm going to game a little bit on it but i want to get back into actually using a actually using a camera and doing some editing on a camera right. doing some audio right. production and playing around with music doing some um um doing some yeah some gaming too i want to do all these things on a better computer this one's kind of getting on the old side i'm going to give it to my brother he does audio production and stuff with mac so he'll use it for i'll give it to him for his birthday on friday and it'll be all good yeah jay i was going to mention an aside do you watch darwin's beer reviews at all yes yes okay because he gets all his six point free how they just every, give it to him? every time they make one of these releases, they send him a can of each of the beers they release. Somebody send me a beer and Matthews beer reviews. And he makes mostly positive reviews, but I don't think he's a pay for play kind of player. I think he would tell it like it is. And if he found one he didn't like, I think he would downgrade it to where he thinks it is. So I don't think he all right, this, not know. a shill. I don't I think, think he's gonna, a sellout, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I think we're going to take the conversation. I think we're getting conversation-y, which is cool. But I think we're going to take that portion off air. But, you know, I say this every week, and I forget to do it. I am going to write it down so we remember this. I need to remember to ask your opinions or, or your mindset going into the examinations. 
when we start. What are your opinions? What were your opinions of beers from California? And are they the same or have they changed or did you not really have much of an opinion to start with? Uh, Jay Terrio. Well, I always liked most beers from California and um, a lot of the ones I used to drink, we don't get anymore because of the onset of the craft beer revolution. Like a lot of the early craft beers like Bear Republic and uh, we get some of the like lesser lights, like the ones from Inyo Kern, California. What are those called? Um, they're all really weird and off track. They never taste right. But we get those still, like Lobotomy Bach from uh, Lobotomy Bach. Uh, wow. But uh, you know, it's it's dropped a lot. Ten years ago, we got a whole lot of California beers. Now it trickles in, and it's not too uh, favorable as far as the quantity. So, but. My opinion has is favorable. I know that one of the California companies crashed, and that was uh, who was the company? Uh, Green Flash. They're they're practically out of business now, and we used to get their beers, but that that just bombed out, sadly. But Jay, I'm have, you, have you ever tried a beer, Jay, from the brewery? Oh, that <laughs> that got me into so much trouble with one of my internet friends. You notice I'm using quotes. Um, they sent you beer and you yeah, reviewed he, it. He claimed that I begged them. I said, well, you can make that claim. I said, but I have the email evidence to prove that they contacted me first. And the man's name was Benjamin Weinstein. And I have the evidence. But he Related didn't want to hear to that. Harvey. No. Yeah, he didn't want to hear that. Oh, uh, in other words, his attitude was, well, evidence doesn't matter. Well, to me, it matters. But anyway, oh. they contacted me and they said, uh, would you like to review our beers? We make sour beers. And I said, oh, I don't really like those kind of beers. They said, oh, it's pretty intense. You might not be able to handle it. I said, oh, believe me, I can handle it. I just may not like it. They said, okay. So they sent them out there to me. And that's where I, that big conflict started with, uh, I, don't, I won't mention it on your channel, but um, I mean, they were all A, A plus beers. There's no doubt. These people make awesome beers, but uh, I didn't, you know, personally, I didn't really care for them, but uh, but they were great beers for people that like sours. You know, they were great. Yeah, yeah. And uh, some like the guy told me that's a twenty dollar a bottle beer. I said I know I wouldn't have bought it otherwise, but I didn't ask those people. They contacted me, but um, I don't get those too much around here anymore. But anyway, what was your question about California beers in general? Favorable. Have have has your mindset changed? Is it the no. same or is it worse? Than it was when you it's the same. Out. It's the same. It's just that I'm a little down in the dumps about not being able to get too many anymore. Okay. Relative to ten years ago. What's what? What, what are your what are your thoughts, opinions? Uh, have they changed? Are they the same? Have they worsened about California beers? Michael Cormorant. I'm very into California beers. The ones we've tasted today, and I followed you on your trip to Russian River, and yeah. oh, and I will. You, I'll paraphrase your comment. You'll tell me if it's accurate. You thought that Pliny the Elder was over the top. You didn't say it was bad, but you said it was not great, and that says something. Yeah, I think in I think in 2018, right now, or maybe even 2017 as well. It uh, it just uh, there's so many other crazy. There's so uh, crazy. There's so many other um. Um, revolutions and different brewing techniques and things that are going on in beer that it just seems like an old old school is great it just seems like it hasn't really aged and, and kept up with the times all that much it's still a, a fantastic representation of a west coast ipa a double ipa so if that's your game have at that one all day long but it sort of stayed where it was and it just sort of let everything age around it if you know what i mean more manufacturers, more brewers coming up with similar beers, which are as good yeah. or close to as good. Uh, that's a pretty good uh, way to put that. Yes. But they Gabriel, make what do you think beers. of Cal ask Gabriel? What do you think of other California beers other than Sierra Nevada? I haven't tried them. Okay. All right. Well, that just means that we need to get you back on this channel, and we need to examine more with you. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. All right. How about uh, John Anile, home 
home in Georgia to many political rallies and demonstrations featuring weird and strange people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But do not all affiliate with. Correct. Um, my my general uh, um, opinion of California beers has really not changed because, as you may or may not know, Lagunitas is one of my favorite companies, and they started out of Petaluma, California. Um, exactly. I still haven't had the Waldo's, though. I'm looking forward to hopefully trying that one. Um, That's a great beer. But I will say that my opinion of Sierra Nevada has changed slightly after this examination because I find that most Sierra Nevada beers are either typical pale ale IPA style kind of run of the mill or, you know, nothing too special about them. Obviously the pale ale was really special when it came out, but a lot of other beers have come out since that are as good, if not better. And I usually find that their beers are generally too hoppy for my personal taste uh, because I'm not a huge hop head like some of you guys on the panel, but this one here is excellent, and this is right in my wheelhouse as far as the style and uh, what I like in my beer. So my opinion of Sierra Nevada has increased slightly after this examination. I got to ask you, and I'm not saying this because of my personal preference or Michael Komarov's personal preference, but how do you stay – how do you what, what, how do you stay with it as a craft beer consumer when there are so many things that are talking about here's another hoppy beer here's a high ABB beer or here's this hoppy beer that's supposed to taste like pineapples and passion fruit how do you how do you stay up with craft beer without getting too far into that direction of beers what do you um, do I don't know. I, I still drink a lot of different IPAs and super hoppy beers and stuff. I, it's just it's not my fa it's not my go-to style, but I can still appreciate the style for what it is and, and rate them accordingly. I think, but um, but you know, like for craft beer, I like uh, like you know, the barrel aged stuff. I like stouts. I like the the sours, the the Flemish style red sours. I like gozas. I like uh, you know, I, I like pretty much everything. So including including the hoppier beers, they're just probably at the bottom of the, the list for me personally, but I still I still enjoy them. Cool. Um, hey, but, look, I gotta go, y'all. Yeah, is the le this is the least hoppy Sierra Nevada beer that sure. I've had? Jay, are you coming to Tyler's Friday review on Belgian Belgian style? Yes, I'm planning on it, and I have a Belgian made beer in my fridge. Okay, Excellent. we're ready for that. Let's uh. That's a great segue to let's go off air with the rest of the comments and conversation. We thank, I thank everybody for being here. I, I feel like this was one of the more well-managed reviews that we've done. So excellent job on my part. Excellent job with the panel. This was fun. Let's do it again next Wednesday, uh, June 6, 2018. Uh, Canadian Limited South. Whiskey. Yeah, next week is right. correct. Dave poured me the beer, and I wanted to save it, but he poured it for me. Beers of the South. So any beer – so my stipulation is going to be it has to be a southern brewery. By that, I mean the brewery has to be from and originated in the South. So and don't look, pick – When we say pick, the South, we mean pre-1861. What I mean by the South in this beer review examination is do not pick – Sierra Nevada that was brewed in Mills River, North Carolina. No, no. A beta beer, a sweetwater beer, terrapin beer, Dogs uh, head. Bar, whatever you want. I mean, it's gotta be it's gotta be a brewery that started and is still brewing their beer in the south. From the old I think south. Jay Jay, the Mason Dixon line should be your borderline. So dogfish head is in Sussex County, which is south Ooh. of the Mason Dixon line. Whoa, that would qualify. Oh, they I, did okay. fight on the side of the north, though, but they Boom. would qualify. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, that's right. So Delaware would be the old south, and uh, any Maryland beers or uh, above. Yeah. Shiner beer from Texas would qualify. Ha -ha. Yes. Yes. All right. Abita. So that's so that's next week. We're doing Beers of the South next week, and then the ending week of May, we're going to do uh, Kona Brewing Company beers. So get ready for oh, maybe yeah. more of uh, 
the uh, sessionable beer drinkers uh, wheelhouse on that. So I can think of some really interesting apparel to wear for beers of the South. Hell yeah. So you know what? Let's uh, call it a day on that. Uh, life's too short. Keep drinking. Hey, we'll see you on Friday. Um, okay. until, next, until next time, keep bye, tasting bye. those great beers. Bye, Cheers. Bye, we'll see you bye. soon. Bye, Eric. We are going off air. Cheers, everybody. Good night, John. Boy.